Today, I want to try to explain p-factor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out a couple of rules to understand p-factor a little bit better. I'm going to explain it in the context of a helicopter, and then I'm going to explain it in the context of an airplane. My hope is that by explaining it these three ways, at least one of them will make sense to most of the people watching. So, to begin with, there are three rules for understanding p-factor. I'm going to lay them out. Uh, the first one is a propeller blade is an airfoil. That's pretty simple. I think we can all agree that a propeller blade is a type of airfoil. Uh, statement number two. Airfoils work better when they have more air flowing over them. So, more air More air over an airfoil equals more effective. So prop is an airfoil. More air over an airfoil equals a more effective airfoil. And three, if an airfoil moves forward through the air, it will be more effective because moving forward through the air means that more air will be going over it. So, an airfoil moving forward into oncoming air will be more effective. So, a propeller is an airfoil. If you move more air over an airfoil, like a prop, then it will be more effective. Or, an airfoil moving forward into oncoming air will be more effective. Now, all of these three rules taken together explain p-factor. However, sometimes it's difficult to understand p-factor if this is all you've got. So, what we're going to do instead is we're going to dr illustrate this with a picture. Let's say that you have a helicopter. We'll draw the body of the helicopter right here. It's got some landing skids. We're viewing the helicopter from the top down. We'll draw the tail of the helicopter. So you've got the tail rotor here, you've got the helicopter here that you're looking down on top of, and we need to draw the disc of the rotor blades. So we will add a uh, prop hub right here, and we'll draw the disc of the rotor blades. And that's okay, it's not great, but it's it'll do. So we've got the, the rotor disc right here. Now, the rotor disc of a helicopter is equivalent to an airfoil. It's uh, The rotor blades themselves are airfoils. So the rotor blades create either more or less lift depending on how much air is flowing over them. In this case, we've got a helicopter and it's moving forward through the air. As the helicopter moves forward through the air, you've got a couple blades of the propeller. One of the blades is, say, right here, and one of the blades is, say, right here. This blade, the blade on the right-hand side, is moving forward. This blade on the left-hand side is moving backward. Uh, the rotor disc on a helicopter rotates counterclockwise when viewed from above. So, as the helicopter flies forward through the air, you have onrushing air coming at you from the front. So the air is rushing towards you and it's blowing past the helicopter, it's also blowing over the rotor blades. Now, on this side, the rotor blade here is going to be moving forward into the oncoming air. That's going to give it more airflow over this rotor blade. The oncoming airflow is going to flow over the rotor blade, and as a result, this rotor blade is going to create more lift 
than this rotor blade is because on the left hand blade the air is flowing over from behind you're actually getting less airflow you're getting negative airflow over this rotor blade because it's moving backwards away from the relative airflow this side is moving forwards this side is moving backwards this side the right hand side of the prop disc is going to be more effective and therefore the rotor blades are going to make more thrust or more lift in this case when they're on the right side of the prop disc moving forward as opposed to on the left side of the prop disc moving backward that's part two we call this p-factor the helicopter is experiencing p-factor right now as it flies forward and the faster it flies forward the more p-factor it's going to experience because there will be a greater asymmetry between this blade and this blade, the green blade and the red blade. The green blade as it moves forward even faster will create more and more lift. The red blade as it moves backward slower will create less and less lift. Now, how does this apply to an airplane? Well, the same thing happens. Let me see if I can draw an airplane here. We'll draw the nose of an aircraft. So this represents the nose. We'll draw the prop itself. Okay, so here we have a propeller and uh, just for fun we'll draw a spinner. So there's a spinner. <coughs> now we'll highlight the leading edges of these blades so they're easier to see. So here's the leading edge of one of the blades and here's the leading edge of the other blade. We're currently looking at the airplane from the left. We're outside on the on the edge of the left wing in fact. So here's the wing, we're standing on top of the wing, here's the other wing. And the top of the aircraft is right here and uh, we'll have the pilot sitting inside and the pilot is facing forward. You're looking at the pilot uh, from the front. I'm not sure why I drew the nose on there. We'll get rid of that. There's the well, that's even worse. All right, so the pilot is looking forward. There is his face and there's his mouth. And we'll give him a hat. That'll be that'll be better than a that better than a nose. All right. So as the pilot flies forward, um, you've got one of the blades of the propeller. The propeller is rotating this way. The right-hand side of the propeller, when viewed from the pilot, is rotating downward. The left-hand side is rotating upward. However, the airplane is flying forward through the air. Well, let's make it, let's do it properly. The airplane is flying forward through the air. That means that induced airflow is going to be flowing backwards across the prop. As air flows backwards, across this prop, this propeller is going to have more airflow coming over it. Therefore, it's going to be more effective. This prop, the prop on the left side when viewed from the pilot, is going to have airflow flowing over it as well, but from behind. It's going to have less effectiveness because it doesn't have induced airflow coming over the front of the prop blade. It's actually less effective because the airflow fr caused by the forward movement of the aircraft is flowing backwards over the prop as it rotates um, in its upward side of the arc. It's important to know that the fact that the prop is moving downward has nothing at all to do with the increased thrust. It just happens to be moving downward and we use that term to describe which blade we're talking about. It has nothing to do with the fact that the blade is moving downward and it has everything to do with the fact that the blade is moving forward through the air and therefore the increased airflow over the prop in the opposite direction causes it to become more effective. In a nutshell, that's P-factor. <laughs>